Maritime Lean in India The Maritime Lean has been described as one of the most striking peculiarities of Admiralty law. It keeps right again a vessel that survived the sale of the ship and that enjoyed priority ahead of registered mortgage even though the lien isn't registered. It may afford right against a vessel even if the lien is created by a charterer or manager of the vessel. The existence of a maritime line reads of the principle that the vessel is a legal entity itself apart from its ownership. The lien is a security interest arising from the personal obligation of the vessel's owner or operator under a contract, but instead the vessel itself owes obligation that may be breached. In general, maritime liens arise out of maritime transaction and maritime accident. They can arise from seafarer lion for which tort liens, which are liens from maritime accidents such as collision or damage to cargo and salvage lien. A maritime lien is a privileged claim given a maritime rest or property in respect of services done to or injury caused by it. The maritime rest can be the ship its cargo, apparel, furniture, tackle, or freight. A maritime lien may be enforced by an action in rem, where the plaintiff seek to enforce a claim to or against the rest or property, or by an action in personam. In an action in rem, the plaintiff commences the proceeding by going after a specific property, whereas in action in personam, the plaintiff may take the defendant property to satisfy a judgment only after he has succeeded in the proceeding. The proceeding commences by issuing process on the ship and taking step to arrest it, so that it doesn't move outside the court jurisdiction. If no person appears in court to Devon, the proceeding will continue against the ship and eventually, the ship may be sold by court order to satisfy the claim. An action in REM prevent a just claim for being defeated by the mere fact of the ship traveling beyond the court jurisdiction. When the holder of a maritime lien obtain a judgment in his favor in an action in REM, the judgment pins all. The purchaser of the ship through this court process derived new title paramount to all previous interests. A maritime lien attached automatically to the rest from the moment that it arises and after an action in REM is initiated in respect of the lien, the claim relates back to the time when it first attached. The lien travel with the rest irrespective of the chain in ownership or possession of the rest. It is immaterial that the person possessing the rest is a bona fide purchaser for value without notice of the maritime lien. There is no system of public registration of maritime liens and therefore a subsequent owner of the rest may have no notice of the lien, although his right may be defeated by it. Some association and website attempt to provide a central posting and search facility in relation to maritime liens. The classification of claim as maritime liens varies around the world. International convention have attempted to impose a degree of uniformity. The scope and extent of admiralty jurisdiction in India is the same as that of England. The Admiralty Bill 2005 pending before the Indian Parliament is substantially based on English Admiralty law. The Indian judiciary has consistently followed English law principle in its exercise of Admiralty jurisdiction. Indian law doesn't specifically define maritime lien. India is a signatory to the International Convention on Maritime Liens and Mortgage 1993, which designates the following claim against the owner, demise carterer, manager, or operator of a vessel as maritime liens. Claim for wakes and other sum due to the master, officers, and other members of the vessel complement in respect of their employment on the vessel, including cost of repatriation and social insurance contribution payable on their behalf. Claim in respect of loss of life or personal injury occurring whether on land or on water in direct connection with the operation of the vessel. Claims for reward for the salvage of the vessel. 
claims for port, canal, and other waterway dues and pilotage dues. Claim arising out of physical loss or damage caused by the operation of the vessel other than loss of or damage to cargo, containers, and passenger effect carried on the vessel. Claims under B and E above that result from damage in connection with the carriage of oil or other hazardous or noxious substance by C for which compensation is payable to the claimant pursuant to international convention or national law providing for strict liability and compulsory insurance or other means of securing the claim or claims that result from radioactive properties or a combination of radioactive properties with toxic, explosive or other hazardous properties of nuclear fuel or of radioactive product or waste do not give rise to a maturity time relief. English law recognized the following maritime lien damage done by a ship, salvage, master wage and disbursement, bottomry and respondenture. This have been recognized as maritime lien by English court since ancient time. English court have held that the maritime lien doesn't exist in respect of towage, necessaries or insurance contribution. Although U.S. law recognized a maritime lien in respect of pilotage dues, English law and Indian law do not. Several countries, including England, entered into an international agreement called the Convention on Arrest of Seagoing Ship, signed in 1952 at Brussels. The Brussels Convention set out an agreed list of claims that may be enforced by arresting seagoing ship. This claim were incorporated into English stated. However, the expanded list of claims listed in the Brussels Convention introduced a number of claims that are additional to the claim based on ancient maritime lien. This additional notional lien are not recognized by English court as maritime liens. They are commonly referred to as statutory liens. Claim for necessary supply to foreign ship, claims for towage, claim for building, equipping or repairing a ship, claim by holders of bills of lading of any goods carried into a port or for damage to such goods are all statutory liens. Till date, Indian courts have recognized maritime lien only in respect of damage, semen switch, selfage of property and bottom re and respondential form, rather than accepting those listed in the 1993 Convention or the Brussels Convention. However, the proposed legislation, the Admiralty Bill 2005, contains an inclusive list of maritime liens that includes a number of claims that are presently regarded as statutory liens. Thank you.